Hey, what is going on everybody? It is your boy Carnage, your Primitive AK here, back with another video for you guys today. Today we are here with the long-awaited, finally, Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War Alpha has officially begun only on PlayStation 4. If you guys haven't already downloaded this, make sure you guys download it. It's completely free to play, no PlayStation Plus required, no pre-order required. And today we're going to be covering the overall best settings to use for Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. A lot of people are going to want to know what the best settings are going to be to use for the Alpha, as well as the Beta, and also the release so we'll be covering any changes that are going to be occurring with the settings but for now uh, we're going to be covering the settings that are in the alpha itself so uh, if you guys are new to the channel make sure you guys leave a like and subscribe let's get right into it today so let's start with your controller settings right off the rip so if you guys are noticing you can actually change to controller and mouse and keyboard in this game I don't have a mouse and keyboard plugged in uh, that so therefore that's why I don't have that setting enabled and I'm not entirely sure if it is enabled in the alpha but regardless just make sure you're on controller if that is is unlocked for whatever reason your sensitivity is going to be something that you're going to have to tweak yet again unfortunately the sensitivity is not the same as modern warfare sensitivity so you're going to have to play with it a bit now my strong recommendation for your sensitivity if you are playing on controller and you've played modern warfare let's say your sensitivity was a five on modern warfare what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to bring this up an additional notch to about seven uh, because of the fact that this full sensitivity on this game is 14 so it's a little bit less than what we had in modern warfare so whatever your sensitivity on modern warfare was bump this up an additional one so for example mine was a six on modern warfare so in black ops i put mine at to a seven and it's a pretty comfortable uh sensitivity now one thing to note in this game is that uh aim assist is very strong on this game i'm not entirely sure why but it is very strong much stronger than what we're used to seeing in modern warfare and uh, previous call of duties it's very similar to black ops 4 if not a little bit stronger your ads stick sensitivity low zoom this is for any standard weapon with like an iron sight or a red dot put this down to about 0.90 that way your sensitivity is going to be 10 percent slower uh than what your actual vehicle your, your actual stick sensitivity is so turn that down to 0.9 high zoom i keep it at 1.0 your stick layout, if you're playing on a standard controller, make sure you leave this on default. Or if you're playing on a scuff controller, leave this on default. Same with goes with your button layout. If you're not on a scuff controller, you'll want to change your button layout over to tactical. So that way you can slide and go prone a lot more. Uh, I strongly disadvise going prone on this game because it's kind of trash. So try to avoid doing that as much as possible. Um, flip l2 leave that as standard invert vertical leave it on disabled controller vibration this is key leave this on disabled vibration is insanely absurdly strong on this game you'll feel literally everything every grenade that's being thrown every bullet that you fire your controller is going to be vibrating like crazy so make sure you leave this on disabled controller sounds uh this is entirely subjective if you don't really care about it you can just turn it off It'll, you'll save battery life on your controller but uh I don't know. I kind of like the sound, so I just left it on. But uh, if you don't care about the sounds, you want to save some battery life on your controller, you can leave that on disabled if you would like. Uh, this is stick drift setting, so I want to make things very clear here. This is a very strange setting that you're going to have to play with a few times. If you do not have any type of stick drift sensitivity whatsoever, leave this on default. The default is 1099 and then 1099 again. So if you do not have any stick drift, leave that the way it is. Uh, if you do have stick drift issues, you're going to have to play with this setting. If you have severe stick drift, uh, turn this down. If you don't have it, just make sure you turn it up. So uh, if you don't have that issue, just leave it the way it is. On your gameplay settings, what you're going to want to do is slow down and strafing aim assist. Make sure that's on enabled. That's just basically aim assist that slows down every time you're looking at a certain target. Airborne mantle behavior, make sure you set this to automatic. And grounded mantle behavior is on press. That's pretty much default. It's not going to change for you. Uh, they'll probably enable that when the game drops, so don't worry about that. Auto move forward. I pretty much leave this on disabled. However, automatic sprint, uh, automatic attack sprint, uh, this is the same as the Modern Warfare automatic sprint setting, so make sure you have that on enabled, so that way your R3, your L3 button isn't getting absolutely murdered, so definitely recommend you turn on auto sprint. It's a godsend, and you have to have it on. Moving on, sprint cancels reload, leave that on enabled. Uh, I actually like this. Uh, you know, If you get caught with your pants down, you need to uh, cancel a reload real quick. That'll certainly help you out in that case. Your sprint behavior, I leave this on go 
2. Aim down sight behavior is set to hold. Steady aim behavior is set to hold. Equipment set to hold. Interact reload behavior. Hit tap to reload. Now when Warzone drops, you're going to want to uh, basically set this over to contextual tap. Uh, so this is actually tap to interact on this game. So definitely recommend you change that setting whenever Warzone drops. Uh, if you play Warzone and you're used to contextual tap, the tap to interact is literally the same exact thing. Um, so pretty much make sure you have that on. If you don't care, just leave it on tap to reload. Attack vehicle control mode, leave that on aim base. If you play in vehicles or you don't play in, if you don't play in vehicles, you don't need to worry about this setting. And also do note, if you can't find these settings, make sure you hit uh, L3 to show advanced. Cause if you guys notice, a lot of those settings I just showed you guys are now disappeared on my screen. You need to hit L3 to show advanced settings and it'll show all the settings that you need to know. Your graphics, now this is gonna be a bit of a, a weird setting that's kind of, I guess, bugged at the moment. And Charlie Intel did mention this. Um, for some reason, motion blur is, enabled by default and it keeps re-enabling it after every single game so you're going to need to make sure that you're turning off your motion blur every single game so i have it on disabled so i'm good to go but after my next match it's going to actually enable it again so make sure you have motion blur off uh you'll be able to see targets at far range and deal quite a decent amount of damage uh to people with the motion blur off so definitely recommend you turn that off your sound settings i kind of leave this on is as is if you're playing uh if you if you're playing with a nice little headset you could put this on bass boost however this is gonna you're gonna hear every grenade across the map and it does get pretty freaking loud so uh definitely recommend you know just give it a shot see if you like it uh all the other sound settings uh i pretty much leave them on default i don't really change any of these you might want to turn down your sound effects volume because when you change this over to boot bass boost or high boost uh those sound effects tend to get pretty freaking loud voice chat i leave on enabled hit marker sound effect leave that on enabled so you know that you're hitting people microphone microphone volume is on default for your interface uh, i put on subtitles so that way anytime a uav is called in if i don't hear it or i don't pay attention to it i can actually look at the freaking just look at the game itself and it'll tell me that a uav is actually called in subtitle backing opacity i leave that on 50 percent so it's not too obstructive subtitle size i leave it on enabled or leave it on normal Damage base hit markers, make sure you hit that on show. Keyboard and mouse uh, obviously is not going to show since I don't have one plugged in. And everything else is pretty much the same as is. And I'm not really going to touch anything else there. But uh, anyways, guys, that's pretty much going to do it for the settings. Uh, if there's anything that I've missed or anything that you're not too sure on, make sure you guys leave it in the comments box down below if you would like to know something specific for your settings. But overall, guys, these are hands down the best settings for modern for uh, Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. Jump in the game. Enjoy it. these settings will help you out a massive ton because a lot of people are just jumping in the game and they're not changing their settings so make sure you guys are changing your settings uh, otherwise you're going to be at a bit of a disadvantage but uh, like i mentioned your sensitivity is going to be something that you're going to have to play around with but overall guys thank you guys so much for watching hope this helped you guys hope you learned something new and uh, if you guys are new to the channel make sure you guys drop a like and subscribe appreciate you guys showing the love and support on the channel as usual anyways guys it is your boy carnage or primitive ak signing out Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video covering the best class setup for Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. Peace out, fellas. Thank you guys for watching.